I would like to welcome all of you to our fourth study. It's the fourth part of homiletics. Our title today is Christ, Our Example. We we'll look at how Jesus was a good and eloquent speaker and the example he gave to us. Before we continue, let us pray. Our dear Lord, our dear Father in heaven, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we welcome you and be with us, O oh Lord. Bless us as we continue to study. Give us a true understanding, a open understanding. Give us the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and a guide. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so today as we continue, our title is Christ, Our Example. We have seen how important is the subject of training our voices. We call it the voice culture. And there are a lot of things we need to improve. And today we want to look unto Jesus. He was a, a very good example to all of us. Before we continue with this, I want to uh, emphasize on one point in our previous, pre, previous talk, previous study, the misuse of uh, this talent. Uh, in misusing, we need to be careful on these things we already mentioned, that we should not use hard, harsh words. We should not use harsh, harsh words. These are the points we already mentioned. We should not use provoking words. Provoking words. We should use, not use useless. We should not apply any useless language. Use less language or words. We should not apply any useless language or any meaningless, or the sister already mentioned, cheat chat, or just talking for the sake of talking. Here she said, the talent of speech is a gift of God. And when we hear, when we hear so much useless, meaningless, cheat chat, uh, cheat, cheat chat we may be assured that those who does use this precious gift are not Christian. Anyone who uses such a language is not a Christian. Okay, another point we need to remember, we should not use idle words. Idle words or idle language. Idle language is uh, was <clears throat> where with the talent of speech, we are to communicate the truth. We have opportunity, um, as we have opportunity. It, sh it shouldn't ever be used in God's service. We should never use any um, abusive words or any words which will cause harm to anybody or idle words. Because we also read that anyone who uses idle words, this will be brought to the review in the day of judgment and we, with it will be judged or with it will be Accounted righteous. Another point we need to remember, we should not, not use frivolous words. Frivolous. These are the points which are frivolous conversation. Conversation. We should never use frivolous conversation. Uh, cultivate the pre precious gift of speech as an agency entrusted to you by God. Do not introduce frivolous, nonsensical subject of conversation. Talk so that minds not of our faith will receive the impression that sound speech and sound principles have been brought into your education. Hear the light of the world who are thus honored all who have improved their opportunities to learn how to serve the Lord in the gift of speech. We saw we should be very careful in our conversation. We should not use any frivolous conversation. Another point is we should not use jestings. 
jestings and joking. Joking. Just in joking. It is the duty of a youth to encourage sobriety, light, lightness, just in joking will result in barrenness of soul and the loss of the favor of God. When people speak, use this, they lose the interest in spiritual things, in spiritual matters. They lose the favor of God. Many of you do not exert a bad influence upon others, and thus feel them in a measure satisfied. But do you exert an influence of for good? Do you seek in your conversation and act to lead others to the Savior? Or if they profess Christ, to lead them to a closer walk with him? So we should never use just in words because these, they diminish, they bring low our spirituality, and also, they mislead others. Also, we should not use cheap talk. Cheap talk. Yes, people, when they are with their friends, they use a lot of time to talk nonsense, things which are of uh, meaningless in life. My friend, my young friends, will you begin your Christian life as those who whose heart are warmed with the love of Christ, you will never know how much good you may do by speaking tenderly, sensible, serious words regarding their soul's salvation to those who do not claim to be children of God. On the other hand, you may never know until the judgment how many opportunities to be, uh, to be Christ's witnesses you have left unimproved. So we should not talk cheap. We should remember that uh, we have every opportunity we, we talk, we get, is to talk serious things pertaining to our salvation and salvation of others. But we should not have any opportunity or any time to talk things which are not for salvation. Another point we need to remember, we should not make any scathing remarks scathing remarks. You should not make any scathing remarks. Uh, this means, it says here, an indwelling Savior is revealed by the words, but the, the Holy Spirit does not abide in the heart of him who is peevish of, uh, if others do not agree with his ideas and plans. From the lips of such a man, there come scathing remarks, scathing remarks. With grief, the, uh, which grief the Holy Spirit away and develop attributes that are satanic rather than divine. The Lord uh, desire those, desires those connected with, the, with his work to speak at all times with the meekness of Christ. So, if you are provoked, do not become impatient. Manifest the gentleness and we, uh, of which Christ has given us to be an example in life. So we should not use any scathing. For example, if somebody provoke and somebody become angry, and now he he starts using uh, certain remarks, which is uh, also prov prov provocative, and this we should never attempt to use. So knowing this, now we come to our point that Christ is our example. Now, <clears throat> when we take Christ our example, uh, our main point here is Christ our example. Our example. Okay, when we... <clears throat> Come to Jesus. We find here that uh, uh, the nature of his voice. Let's look to Jesus. Uh, as we look to Jesus, we need to read this verse. Will it be a very good introduction? Ver chapter 7, 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 38 and 39. I would like to read that verse, 38 and 39. In Matthew 7, 38, 39, I read it says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. When he had finished his sermon upon the Mount of Blessing, all people were astonished by his doctrine. Now, the spirit of prophecy tells us, Jesus is our example. His voice was musical and it was never raised in high strength notes while he was speaking to, to the people. He did not speak so rapid that his words were crowded one upon another in such a way that it made it difficult to understand, to understand him. He distinctly in enunciated every word and those that had his voice bore the testimony that never man spake like this man. A calm, earnest, musical voice. He continue saying here that by loving words and by works of mercy, Christ bore down all the tradition and made a man and man-made commandments and he presented the love of the Father in its exhaustless fullness. His calm, earnest, musical voice fell like balm on the wounded spirit. The voice of Jesus was calm, earnest, serious, and musical. It was flowing like music, and it fell as a balm on the wounded spirit. So we are told here that love in his tune, his tender compassion fell with a touch of healing upon his weary and the troubled hearts. Even amid the turbulence of, turbulence of angry enemies, he was, surrounded, he was surrounded with an atmosphere of peace. Always he was surrounded with an atmosphere of peace. The beauty of his countenance, the loveliness of his character, above all, the love expressed in look and the tone drew, the, drew him to all who were not hardened in unbelief. Had it not been for the sweet, sympathetic spirit that shone out in every look and word, he would not have attracted the large congregation that he, he, he did. The Savior's voice was as music to the ears of those who had been accustomed to the monotonous, spiritless speeches, uh, preaching of the scribes and Pharisees. He spoke slowly and impressively, emphasizing those words which he had wished his hearers to give special heed. Old and young, ignorant and learned, could catch the full meaning of his words. This would have been impossible had he spoken in a hurried way and hushed sentences upon sentence without pause. The people were very attentive to him, and it was said of him that he spoke not as the scribes and the Pharisees, for his words was as one of the one, uh, was as of one who had authority. That is wonderful how Jesus is presented. Now we look to another title that is Jesus uh, wants us to, I mean, the Bible or God wants us to use our original voices. We should not imitate, we should not imply uh, artificial languages, we should not change our, but we need, <laughs> yes, say, uh, everyone should, be, should use personal, uh, original voice. Ministers are never to copy any man's gestures, his habits, his attitude, his expression, the tones of his voice. We should not copy from another person. 
everyone they are to become no man's shadow in thought, in sentiments, or in devising and executing the great whole. If God had made you a shepherd of the flock, he has given you qualification to do that work. Christ says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. According to Matthew 23 verse 9. Let every man take his Bible and bless himself in divine communion with the great teacher. God is the source from which all knowledge and wisdom flows. So we should not copy from anybody, copy in trying to imitate the language or the voice of another person or style or whatever gestures. No, we should follow what God has instructed us. We are falling in another direction, and that is that men who can work should be linked in their labors with those who are inexperienced. Okay. Those who are inexperienced, who are new in their work, should be connected with those who are experienced. That they may get an experience in the right direction. The inexperienced ones should not be sent out alone. They should stand right by the side of older and experienced ministers where they could educate them. They should say to them, you must not copy my guest chairs. So the experienced ones will tell the inexperienced that you should not, you must not copy my guest chairs, nor my tone of my voice, so that nobody will know whether you are speaking or whether I am speaking. You are to stand in your own armor with your own phase, a phase of character sanctified by God. You are not to take my phase of character, nor my gestures, nor my tone of voice, nor my expression, or nor, nor my words. So that is very important also, that we should not copy the, other, the character, gestures, or voice, but accept the good experience which people have won this, we can learn and practice it. Now we look to another point that, <clears throat> and that is uh, um, effective, effectiveness of presentation. Effect, effectiveness of presentation. Every word a savior, a server of life. Whenever we, he, Jesus, now he's talking of Jesus, whenever he was, wherever he was, Jesus, in the synagogue, by the wayside, in the boat, Thrust out, or, uh, uh, thrust out a, a, a little from the land at the Pharisees' feast or the table of the publican, he spoke to men of the things pertaining to the higher life. So wherever he was, in the seaside, in the boat, or with the publican table, eating with them, or wherever with the Pharisees, he, was, he used to speak things pertaining to eternal life. The things of nature, the events of daily life, were bound up by him with the words of truth. When you talk about nature, when you talk about the things of our common life, Jesus annexed it with the word of life, with the word of truth. Truth is what we are told. The hearts of his hearers were drawn to him for he had healed their sick, had comforted their sorrowing ones, and had taken their children in his arms and blessed them. When he opened his lips to speak, their attention was reverted upon him, and every word was to come to, uh, was to some uh, soul a savor of life unto life. That's how Jesus was. Everything he, he did, he presented the word of God. Every opportunity he got, he presented the word of truth. As soon as he could talk, Jesus, even in his childhood, as soon as he, he, he could talk, Christ used the talent of speech. In the family circle, 
and among their friends and acquaintances in a way that was without fault. Not one impure, escape, uh, impure word escaped his lips. After Joseph and Mary had the searched for him. For three days, they found him in the court of the temple, sitting with, in the midst of the doctors of the law of God, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that he heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. He answered his questions with a grace that charmed this land man. His mother could not but mark his words, his spirit, his willing obedience, and uh, to all her requirements. His audience, <clears throat> to his audience, which reported that uh, unlearned peasants and fishermen from the surrounding countries, the Roman soldiers from the barracks of Herod, Chiefs them from their sword at their, their sides, read to the to put down anything that might serve of rebellion. The avaricious tax gatherers from their tall boots and from the Sahedrin, the Pilatus uh, priests, all listened to. John the Baptist as if spellbound, and all, even the Pharisees and Sadducees, the cold and impressive scoffer, went away with the sniff, silence, and cut to the heart with the sense of their sins. Herod, in his palace, heard the message, and proud, and the proud, sin-hardened ruler trembled at the call to repentance. So here, we hear that about Jesus, as well as it's also an, uh, in connected with the, uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist also uh, was a very good eloquent speaker. He's connected in this part. We need to be very careful how we use the language. Always we need to think about our Lord Jesus, that how can I do, how can I speak, how can I uh, utter words to be like Jesus, to present like Jesus, that I will not offend my Lord Jesus, I should not offend the Holy Spirit, that I may learn from another great example, Jesus. Whatever we are doing, we need to remember that we have to learn from Jesus. Uh, uh, another point which is uh, very important for us, it say here, we should use love, sympathy, and kindness in our speech. Jesus, the Savior, never suppressed the truth, but he uttered it always in love. In his intercourse with others, he exercised the great tact, and he was always kind and thoughtful. He was never rude, never needlessly spoke a severe word, never gave unnecessary pain to a sensitive soul. He did not censure human weakness. He fearlessly denounced hypocrisy, unbelief, and iniquity. But tears were in his eye, in his, but tears were in his voice as he uttered his scathing rebukes. He never made truth cruel, but ever manifested a deep tenderness for the humanity. So that's how that's. How how was Jesus? He never at any moment uttered any cruel word. But whenever he was forced, it was necessary to rebuke, he did that with uh, tears. This is what we are told. Oh, continue saying here that multitudes who were not interested in the languages of the rabbis were attracted by his teaching. They could understand his words, and their hearts were warmed and comforted. He spoke of God not as an avenging judge, but as a tender father, and he revealed the image of God as mirrored in himself. His words were like a balm to the wounded spirit. 
both by his words and by his works of mercy. He was breaking the oppressive power of the old traditions and the man-made commandments and presenting, to, uh, presenting the love of God in its exhaustless fullness. Yes, that was Jesus. Uh, the life of Christ was filled with words of, and acts of benevolence, sympathy, and love. He was ever attractive to listen to, he was ever attentive to listen to and relieve the woe of those who came to him. Multitudes carried in their own persons the evidence of his divine power. Yet after the work had been accomplished, many were ashamed of the humble yet mighty teacher. Because the rulers did not believe in on him. The people were not willing to accept Jesus. He was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. They could not endure to be governed by his sober, self-denying life. They wished to enjoy the honor which the world bestows. Yet, many followed the Son of God and listened to his instructions, feasting upon the words which fell so graciously from his lips. His words were full of meaning, yet so plain that the weakest could understand. That's what is reported about Jesus. And he continues, says that the words of the master were clear and distinct, and were spoken in sympathy and tenderness. They carried with, the, with them the assurance that here was truth. It was the simplicity and earnestness with which Christ labored and spoke that it drew men to him. And it's really the comfort, comfort, comfort and tenderness, even in his childhood, he spoke words of comfort and tenderness to young and old. He was an example of what all children may be, may strive to be. In his words and actions, he manifested a tender sympathy for all. His companionship was a healing, soothing balm to the disheartened and the depressed. Jesus was so careful and so uh, meek that he never at any moment, either through his character or through his speech, spoke any word that was in a boastful or of selfishness. He, he was always mindful about others. And uh, we are told that we needed to copy from that. Even children needed to learn from Jesus that even from his childhood, he never offended any person. Now, simplicity. We need to look at this point. Simplicity. We need to do everything in simplicity like Jesus. Christ always used the most simple language. We see people today, even among the educated, they want to use very hard language, very strong vocabulary, very big, high grammar. They want to use words which people cannot understand. But Jesus was not so. Christ always used a very and most simple language. Yet his words were received by deep and prejudiced thinkers. For they were words that tested their wisdom. Spiritual things should always be presented in a simple language. Even though learned men are being addressed, for such a general ignorance, ignorant regarding spiritual things, the simplest language is the most eloquent. Educated and uneducated needed to be addressed in the plainest, simplest manner so that the truth may be comprehended and find lodgment in the heart. So Christ addressed the vast crowds that thronged about him and all learned and unlearned were able to comprehend his lessons. That was Christ. He used a very simple language and we should also learn that. that we need to use a language that is very clear to all people of all classes. Now, 
simplicity for land and common people. The greatest teacher of the world, that's Jesus, the greatest teacher the world have ever knew was admired for, for his simplicity. For he presented it tr the divine truth in such a way that even children could comprehend his words. And at the same time, he drew the attention of the, the, of the best educated and the deepest thinkers of the world. By the use of familiar illustrations, he made the truth plain to the minds of the common people. His simplicity, his, he sowed the seed of the gospel truth in the mind and the hearts of his hearers, and it sprang up and yielded a harvest unto everlasting life. He spoke to them in language so simple that he could not fail of under, uh, they could not fail of understanding. By methods peculiarly his own, he helped all who were in sorrow and affliction. With tender, courteous grace, he ministered to the sick, to the sin sick, sick soul, bringing healing and strength. The, he sought access to the people by the path of their most familiar associations. He presented the truth in such a way that he, he uh, ever after after was to come was to him his hearers interwined with the, with their most hallowed recollections of sympathies. He taught in a way that made them feel the completeness of his identification with their interest and happiness. His instruction was so direct. His illustrations were so appropriate. His words so sympathetic and cheerful that his hearers were charmed. The simplicity and the innocence with which he addressed the needy hallowed every word. So Christ never flattered men. He never flattered any man. He never spoke that which would exalt their fancies or ima or, and imaginations. Nor did he praise them for their clever inventions. But deep and prejudiced thinkers received his teachings and found that it tested their wisdom. They marveled at the spirit Spiritual truth expressed in their simplest language. That's how Jesus was, can be <coughs> reflected in these words. So the words of life were presented in such, such simplicity that the child could understand them. Men, women, and children were so impressed with his manner of explaining the scriptures that they, they would catch the very attonation of his voice, place the same emphasis on their words, and imitate his gestures. The Savior came to preach the gospel to the poor. In his teaching, he used the simplest term and the plainest symbol, and it is said that the common people had him gladly. Those who, like we read in Matthew 12, verse 37, as well as in Luke 4, 20, uh, Luke 4, 18. Those who are seeking to do his work for this time need a deeper insight into the lessons he has given. If we need to do a very good work for Christ, we need to study well the lessons Jesus has given. Here is very much emphasized about simplicity, how we should use a simple language and a very clear language that is understandable to all classes of people, learned and unlearned, simple people and high, or people of high caliber also. Now, <clears throat> another point. But in these words spoken by the great teacher the world have ever known, there is no parade of human eloquence. The language is plain, 
and their thoughts and their sentiments are marked with great simplicity. The poor, the unlearned, and the most simple-minded can understand them. The Lord of heaven was in mercy and kindness addressing the soul, souls he came to save. He taught them as one having authority, speaking the words of eternal life. Now, <clears throat> we need to look into another uh, point uh, about the power, authority, and earnestness with which Jesus applied. We are told here that uh, the practical truth he uttered had the convincing power and arrested the attention of the people. Multitudes lingered at his side, marveling at his wisdom. His manner, manner uh, corresponded with the great truth he explained. There was no apology, no hesitancy, no, not the shadow of doubt or uncertainty that it might be other than he declared. He spoke of the earthly and of the heavenly, of the, of the human and the divine. His positive authority and, uh, and the people were astonished at his doctrine. His words was with power. That was Christ. His words were with power. This is very important for us to learn how we should, what approach we should use so that our words should have power upon the, our, our audience, upon the listeners. Christ taught with authority. The sermons on the mount is a wonderful production, yet it's so simple that a child can understand it without being misled. The amount of beatitudes is even is an emblem of the high elevation on which Christ ever stood. He spoke with an authority which was ex ex exclusively his own. Continue saying, Christ spoke with the authority of a king, and in his appearance and in his tone of his voice. There was, not, there was that which they had no power to resist. At the words of command, they realized, as they had never realized before, their true position of hypocrites and robbers. With clearness and power, he spoke the words that were to come down to our time as a treasure of goodness. What precious words they were. And how full of encouragement. From his divine lips, they are filled with fullness and abundance, assurance, the benediction that showed him to be the fountain of all goodness. And that is, and that it was his prerogative to bless and impress the minds of all present. There was occasions when Christ spoke with an authority that he sent, words, he sent him words home with irresistible force, with an overwhelming sense of the greatness of the speaker. And the human agencies shrunk into nothingness in comparison with the one before him. Then they deeply moved. Their minds were impressed that he was repeating the command from the most excellent, excellent glory. As he summoned the world to listen, they were spellbound and entranced, and the conviction came to their minds. Every word made for itself a place, and the hearers believed and received the words that, were, that they had no power to resist. Every word he uttered seemed to the hearers as the life of God. So, Christ spoke with power that swayed the people like the mighty tempest. It is written, my father's, my father's house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. 
His voice sounded like a trumpet through the temple. The displeasure of his countenance seemed like consuming fire. With authority, he commanded it. Take these things hence. So this is a wonderful presentation we are told that Jesus spoke with the power and the authority. This is a, uh, an example we needed to learn how to present, how to speak before people. We should be very careful uh, not to use an approach that will, will, will be so weak. But Jesus used the power, I need to learn that. His voice was never pitched to an unnatural key. And the, his words came with an earnestness and the assurance appropriate to their importance and the momentous uh, consequences involved in their reception or rejection. When his doctrines were opposed, he defended them with so great zeal and certainty as to impress his hearers that he would die if need be to sustain the authority of his teachings. When he taught, his words came with authority, for he spoke with positive knowledge of the truth. So, this is a, our good example. We need to be very careful how to, to react when we meet an opposition. Jesus was ready even to die while defending the truth, but in simplicity, he never quarreled. There are souls who erry. Now we need to, the topic here is hope and encouragement. We need to use encouragement. There are souls who erry and who feel their shame and their folly. They are hungry for words of encouragement. They look f upon their mistakes and their errors until they are almost driven to despair. Instead of reproving and condemning them and taking away the last ray of hope that the sun of righteousness sheds into their souls hearts, let your words fall as healing balm upon the bruised soul. Be not like a desolation hail that beats down and destroys the tender hope Bringing up in the heart, springing up in their hearts. Leave not the hungry, starving soul in his helplessness to perish because you fail to speak words of tenderness and encouragement. Encouragement is the work of angels also. Words of cheer and encouragement is spoken when the soul is sick and the Pulse of courage is low. These are regarded by the Savior as if spoken to himself. As hearts are cheered, the heavenly angels look on in pleased recognition. There is many brave soul, soul, soul solely pressed by temptation, almost ready to faint in the conflict with self and with the power of evil. Do not discourage such a one in his hard struggle. Cheer him up with brave, hopeful words that shall urge him on his way. Thus the light of Christ may shine from you. None of us liveth to himself. By our unconscious influence, others may be encouraged and strengthened and they may be discouraged or repelled from Christ and the truth. We need to know this fact that there are many people who are living in discouragement, in despair and remorse. They need words of encouragement. They may be very grave sinners. They might be very great offenders, but we need to speak to them words of encouragement, words that will Bring them a hope and a courage to look unto Jesus. So as we conclude here for today, I pray that may God help us.
that we may remember that Christ is our example. He spoke as someone with the authority, and we needed to learn the steps, the points mentioned in this study, that we should be also uh, learners from Christ, and we should uh, uh, take his example uh, to be our experience, that one day we may also speak well as he spoke. We will conclude our st study today by a prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn the example of Jesus in speech and uh, in, in conversation. Help us, Lord, that we may learn from him and become good speakers and speakers with uh, compassion and uh, who will uh, follow the example of Jesus. Bless every listener, bless every student, bless all of us, bless thy church, bless thy people. This we pray and commit ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen.